my name is Shannon from SIS for Teachers. Today we're going to be talking about adding fractions with uncommon denominators. If you've watched our previous videos, we've done some videos on showing how to take a fraction larger than one and put it into a mixed number. We've also done adding fractions with common denominators using one of my favorite tools, which is area model papers that are in different colors. So if we look at this concept, of how to look at adding fractions with uncommon denominators, it's really important for students to conceptually understand this. We don't want you necessarily to start learning this and somebody tell you, okay, start skip counting by fours. Four, eight, 12, 16, and then going 16. Oh, I found a common denominator. I'm gonna to explain to you why we might want to wait to start to teach students a procedure with a concept they're really not understanding. In 21st century math, students need to understand how to explain what they're doing. So let's take a look at this in a conceptual way to make sure students understand it. So if I have my area model papers, I might build what I'm adding. So on my board, I'm gonna go ahead and add my two fourths. The yellow piece that we have cut out is um, the unit fraction of one fourth, so it fits nicely onto our area model paper. I'm then gonna show four sixteenths. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four. So if students think about this for a minute. Can I add all these pieces together all at once? Not really, because they aren't really even equal, right? They don't really have the same, that is to equal, they're not even the same size to add together. When students become familiar with this, you know, does it make sense to change this all to sixteenths to find what we know as the least common denominator? Well, I could do that. I could take all of these and I could put these on top and then I would be able to add them together. But the question I pose to your class is, is this the most efficient way? When looking at the area model papers, do we have to change our two fourths into eight sixteenths in order to add this? We can. We certainly are going to get an answer that we can add together, and then we might have to do more work after that. Or is there another way? If you're using this video as a lesson launch, I might stop the video and ask your students how they can create a different way to add this together. What you want students to do is to come up with their own ways. Some students might say, well, it would be a lot easier. I could even just use eighths. I don't have to use, you know, sixteenths. So is eighths common to sixteenths and fours? Well, I don't know. Let's see. If I were to go ahead and put the eighths on top, I certainly could also add this together. So in essence, now I'm completely changing both fractions to an equivalent fraction. So in this case, we're saying that two fourths is equal to one, two, three, four eighths. And then we're saying that our four sixteenths is now equal to two eighths. Could I add this together and could I get an answer? Would I maybe have to reduce or simplify my fraction? Maybe. Let's talk about, is there another way that we could add this together by using a common piece that we might know? Some students might say, you know what I really wanna do is look at that four sixteenths and think about what an equivalent fraction is. If you've used the area model papers to help students with equivalent fractions, they now have an imprint or an understanding of what pieces equal other pieces. So some students might say, I don't have to do any math. I can look at it and the answer is three fourths. Of course, the answer is three fourths, but how did they go about getting that? So kids would say, I left that two fourths just the way it was, but I changed my four sixteenths into simply one fourth, which is correct. So if we looked at kind of all of these answers, are they all correct? Is the answer three fourths correct? Yes. Is the answer that we would have had of six eighths, correct? Yes, if someone were to change into eighths. Is the answer 12 sixteenths correct? Yes, all three of these are correct answers. 
But if we looked at it in the simplest form, or which piece of paper we would use the least amount of, three-fourths would be. Students have to identify if in an answer key, you know, three-fourths is the only option, and they get six-eighths or twelve-sixteenths, they have to be able to know how to reduce the fraction, of course, or we can look at it conceptually in this way. We're starting off this concept with friendly fractions first to help students to get the idea of what's really happening while they're doing the math. Let's try another problem that we can use that will help you to conceptually understand this. Then we hope that you stop this video and with your class as a lesson launch into adding fractions with uncommon denominators. They can use our area model papers, which you um, can now purchase in our store at sisforteachers.org. It'll be out um, the end of March of 2020, where you can buy your own set that's already pre-made, which is gonna be excellent for you to use in your classroom. So let's say I came up with another problem that I wanted to add together. Maybe I wanted to take, uh, let's try and look at this. Let's do 4 sixteenths plus, let's do um, 2 eighths. Okay, so we're going to add together 4 sixteenths plus 2 eighths. So on my board, I'm going to build it. Partners can work with the board together as they start to solve it. So here I have my 4 sixteenths. And then I'm going to put on my 2 eighths. So here, I have a nice conceptual picture of what this is asking, right? Obviously, some students are just going to add across the bottom, add across the top. We know that's not right because we're talking about 2 out of the 8, which is representative of our pink, 4 out of 16, which represents in our green. So let's pose the question. Should we change all of these to 16 Wow, there's lots of answers for this. It might be even a great idea for an inquiry-based activity to stop the video right now and ask your students to explore the differences of answers that they could come up with. It all would equal the same, but them being creative, thinking about the other fractional pieces of one-fourth, even of our one-half, our you know, eighths or our sixteenths. What are we going to come up with to kind of add this together? If you've paused the video and you're coming back to us, we now can kind of show up what some of the students may have thought of. Some of the students might have gone right away and said, we need to change this and make this into sixteenths. So in essence, what did we do? We took the four sixteenths and we left it the same. Right, we're gonna leave that the same, but our two eighths, we ended up changing it into an equivalent fraction of four sixteenths and four sixteenths. Therefore, the answer somebody got in our class was eight sixteenths. We're gonna write that up here as an option. Another student might have raised their hand in your class and said something different. I didn't solve it that way. I didn't change all of these to sixteenths. I thought it would be easier to make these all eighths. So they may have said, I changed my four sixteenths into two eighths to add it together. So let's look at that in the algorithm. What's that look like? So they said they kept the two eighths, but they changed their four sixteenths to two eighths. Two eighths plus two eighths equals four eighths. So another answer they ended up getting here is four eighths. Did students in your classroom come up with another way to solve it? Let's see, I'm gonna keep my two eights here, show the original problem. Some students may have said, nope, I ended up changing this and I didn't do it that way. Our group solved it a different way. Tell us how you did that. They may explain that they ended up taking the four sixteenths and covering it and making it into a fourth and a fourth. Does four sixteenths equal one fourth? Well, yes, we just proved it right here. Does two eighths equal one fourth? Yeah, we just proved it right here. So now we're essentially adding one fourth plus one fourth, which is going to give us two fourths. You may have had one other option that came up using the area model papers that a student just said, I don't have to do any math. I know it's equal to half. Why would they say that it's just equal to half? Well, they know 
if they were to look at four sixteenths conceptually with the two eighths, it makes it one half. So we might have all of these answers in a classroom. The discussion to have with your classroom is all of these answers correct? Yes, but in some cases on test items or even on you know independent work, it might not give the option of two fourths or eight sixteenths. It might only give the option of one eighth. So understanding and anchoring to half that we know that eight sixteenths, four eighths, two fourths, and one half are all equal to the same one half, right? And we kind of showed that here. I think teaching kids conceptually adding fractions with uncommon denominators is really important with common fractions. If you go to our store, check out our set of these where you can get a set of 15 of these into your classroom. It can be a really dynamic tool. You also can do these same examples that I'm showing in this video with pattern blocks or even patty paper to get kids to conceptually understand. Some students might need to go back to the mass salad bar and use friendly fractions like this to understand the concept before they start to get into the understanding of how to create equivalent fractions out of different fractions. We hope that you found this video really helpful. We're going to be doing some subtraction videos as well that will be on our YouTube channel and multiplication and division of fractions. We hope that you're able to use this in a flipped classroom concept in your classroom to help students understand this concept first before we just dive into teaching them a procedure with a concept they don't understand. We hope you'll check us out at sis4teachers.org. Thanks so much for joining us.